Charmaine. Yes. How We're are you? In, I am doing good. I hate homelessness, but I'm grateful to see you. I'm grateful to see you too, because I haven't seen you in a long, long time. A long, long time. It was, I think, 10 years or so. I interviewed you on the side of the New York City Rescue Mission, just like we were talking today. Yes, you did. And you slept outside last night. Yes, I did. Tell me about homelessness in New York. Survival is a technique. Um, I've been in and out of the shelters. It's rough. It's like running your own business. You have to survive. Um, I'm back on the streets. I do have a temporary shelter, but as of now, because of the pandemic, it's hard to be in a shelter where it's still clustered with people that you don't belong around. Sure. And everybody needs their own space and, and own it's, privacy. From my understanding, it's all male. Where I'm at, I'm a DV survivor, and I'm in a shelter with all male. And Where did I get lost in this system is beyond me. So I'm back on the streets hoping to get placed in the right place. Not displaced. So and you're sharing, if you were in the shelter or where you're staying, you would, it's an all male bathroom. I have, um, I have my own room. There's six older gentlemen, all veterans. We share three bathrooms together and a kitchen. Obviously they're all veterans, they're all men. It's not too safe or convenient for me as a female. So you're out here hoping that social services will find you a better place? Absolutely. Now when we first met, you talked about going in and out of the shelter system. And that's still happening. And that's still happening. They place you, they let you go, they move you, they let you go, they get your money from the government, they let you go, and you're still misplaced. Every homeless person has a different reason why they're homeless. They have different needs. Not everyone has a mental issue. Everyone needs their own little space. Not everyone could sleep in the same room with someone else. Myself, as a female, 45 years old, I need to have my own room my own bathroom, my own kitchen, and not see a male or another female. They're hoping to push you to a mental breakdown, and then you get your own apartment. I'm not gonna let it happen that way. So what you're seeing is people that are prioritized are being of the deprioritized. Yeah. Um, where'd you sleep? last night. I'm right here. Right here? Right here. Right here. Oh right where you're looking at. Oh my right? gosh. Right on the right sidewalk? Right this is where I've been sleeping for the past three, four nights. And right over there. You turn your camera by the post office steps, right there. For the past three, four nights and some nights we go up the block right in this neighborhood. What's that like? Um, very scary. A lot of new faces. You're sleeping with both eyes open and hoping that you make it through to see the next morning. You're hoping you get something to eat. You're hoping somebody, you know, doesn't hurt you. And just hoping that there's hope. Well, people say, well, why don't you go into your room? Um, Because your room is even scarier than being on the streets sometimes. If you don't know who's next to you in that room or who is in the next room next to you and you gotta come out your room to use the bathroom and there's a gentleman in the bathroom with the door open under my situation, that's what I've experienced. So I'd rather be out on the streets. I got some friends out here, got a boyfriend. We look out for each other. I feel a little safer sometimes, not all the time. So since I met you, since your first interview, and this truck's really loud. Yes. Since well, I met has. you the first time, how long have you been outside compared to inside? Most um, of the time? Most right? of the, um, about, i say about 80% of the time I've been outside. Wow. Yeah, about 80% of the time I've been outside. When I first got that room, I did last winter in it. As soon as I got warm, 
And this pandemic hit, I came right back outside. I run into people out here all the time that feel it's safer either because they were in a bad placement like you are or their kids with their family and their family situation isn't safe. Yes, there's a lot of different issues out here. And I feel as the outreach teams, they're, they're doing the best they can, but they're also being misplaced as how to handle every individual's different. They're just looking to place you wherever they want to. For whatever reason that might be, I don't know. So tell me about that. You're very knowledgeable about homeless services in New York City. Gosh, I mean, you've been so many places. It's too many. <laughs> too many. Tell me what's what's working and what isn't. Um, nothing's really working. Well, you're obviously <laughs> to be honest, you're still out here. <laughs> honestly, nothing's really working. We've got about four different outreach teams, and everybody tries to help you but there's no communications between either four teams and you get lost because you can only work with one and not another and then you lose you get a case manager and then that case manager leaves then there's another one that's going to be looking for you somewhere but if I'm not sitting here and you're looking for me and I'm on the other block and I don't see you how is that working out for anybody nobody because you don't even know who I am because they just handed you my name and you don't even know who I am, but you're looking for me. So you miss your interviews, you miss your appointments, you miss everything. So how about police? Police has gotten um, very lenient. They really don't, once you're not killing and fussing and do nothing to ninja up, they are gonna leave you alone now. Besides, uh, shelters not being safe. How has the coronavirus pandemic affected you? I know in many places, you know, bathrooms and less street traffic to panhandle and bathrooms closed. Less, less people moving around. Same thing. Bathrooms are closed. Um, the bathroom hasn't bothered me that much because I'm pretty good at going downstairs in Penn Station using a bathroom, cleaning up after myself and, you know, wearing my mask and stuff. It's out here. There's less people coming out to help you with food and, you know, it's right. money-wise, survival-wise has gotten worse. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, for myself, I've been okay with the bathroom and stuff. But other people, though, I can see they haven't been. That's because you're close to yeah. a public, but so, a lot of places are A lot are of places closest. aren't, yeah. Um, what would you want housed people to know about homelessness? Please don't get there. and. Don't think that it's a disease, because it's not. It can happen to anyone. Do not look down on anyone, because at this time, and the way the world is going, it can happen to you too. If you can, use your judgment, and do not judge. Thank you. If you had three wishes, what would they be? To see you again, every time, so I could keep doing this, and people would learn something and life would get better for everybody. I'm wearing a mask so you can't see me smiling, but I'm smiling you ear to ear. You can your eyes. Yeah. I love you. Okay. Thank you, Mark. That's one wish. Second one was for me to actually get somewhere to live and I would get a job working with homeless people and I could make a difference. You'd make a great case manager. I know. Third, third wish? Third was to learn more so I could get into the system and get people out of the system. Great wishes. Well, again, I hate homelessness, but it's good seeing you. You too. Uh, God. You too. Thank you very much You're for welcome. talking to me. You're welcome, Mike.